Representativeness heuristic we'll talk about again, but this is, the, this is a really powerful bias, or leads to a very powerful bias. Representativeness takes certain representative cases as over-represented in the general population. So for example, if you're a doctor and you're told that the patient in the next room has HIV, you will present yourself with your archetypical HIV patient. So you will probably think to yourself, gay man, right? Okay, now, if you were asked as a doctor, how likely is it that the person next door is a gay man, your odds, the probability that you would give that the person next door is a gay man, are higher than the actual probability that a person with HIV that you don't know is a gay man, okay? So if, for example, someone says, the person next door has a torn ACL, yeah, same setup, less emotional setup, torn ACL. What do you think? If you hear torn ACL, what do you think? Uh, football player. Okay. So, if it was someone with a torn ACL next door, what are the chances that that person is a football player? Now you've been primed, so you know how many football players are there as a percentage of the general population? Very small percentage of the general population is a football player, right? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Now the person next door is a member of the <coughs> general population, a very small portion of whom have this career, football player, or this activity, football player. Most people don't. Okay? Within the population of people who play football, how many people get torn ACLs? Well, not everyone who plays football gets a torn ACL, right? Half of them? No. Less than half? <laughs> Very small relative to the overall population of players will tear their ACL. Yeah? Okay. So now, are we revising the likelihood that the person next door is a football player? I hope so. Okay. So notice that, I'll get you in a second, Joshua. Representativeness is where the connection, the psychological association, ACL, football player, is very strong. And that overrides your ability to do what? To accurately judge or to sort of gauge what is the actual likelihood that this person is doing that. So let's say I was to describe to you my friend Charles, okay? And I said, my friend Charles is constantly reading. He's extremely smart, <coughs> right? He's involved in progressive politics. He's um, really good at trivial pursuit. He's obsessive about facts, right? His hobby is looking at railroad signals all around the world and figuring out signaling systems for the railroad. Yeah? Yeah, he just goes and he looks and he's like, wow, in, in Argentina they use these signals on the railroad. Okay. What are the chances, so if I told you, okay, is Charles more likely to be a school teacher? Let's say a, a math teacher, even more specific. Or work in sales? Which would you say? Now you've been primed, so what do you think? Given that information, what do you think? School teacher or he works in sales? You'd assume a school teacher. Sales. Why sales? Okay, so most people, in fact, work in sales in some capacity, right? 
So if even knowing that he has these dispositions, think of all the people who work in sales who have those dispositions also, right? Okay. So the strong association that leads us to say school teacher or librarian or professor or whatever, you can see why those associations get made, right? We can prime those associations, but you've overridden, what have you overridden? The actual distribution of the population, which is, for the most part, I guess, oh, like 50%, I don't know how many percent of people, but I mean, it's the most widely, it's the widest whatever job or whatever you'd call it. I mean, it's the most popular job is, is working in sales in some capacity. So the idea that, you know, we can be primed by these strong associations is something, we, we just have to be super aware of it. So that's representativeness. 